Brian Pearson. Yes, my question to the panel is, whilst it's good to focus on human rights abroad, I'd like to point out that there were 16,000 submissions to Philip Ruddock's Religious Freedom Review, one of which was my own. So there's obviously great concern in our own society for things like religious freedom and freedom of speech. And I'd just like to know what specific laws the panel could recommend that we should pass in Australia so that people don't feel threatened when they have a uh, religiously held conviction or a particular point of view. Well, Graham Morris, let's start with you. We had a vote here which said that the gay community could marry. We did not have a vote that says everyone has to wake up in the morning, including footballers like Falau, and say, hey, it's a good idea to be gay. Um, I, I think it was one of the problems with the plebiscite we had. We sort of, do you think gay people should marry? And most people would say yes to that. But then we'd say, we'll tell you what that means after the vote. And we are now having a couple of inquiries, one held by Philip Ruddock, as to what sort of people should be exempt from that. Now, you could understand the churches should be exempt. That should be a no-brainer. What about a country hall where the council is a, is a little bit uncomfortable? What about, you know, the, the, the silly ones that people raise, like the cake maker and whatnot? But here we are, after having a vote, we're now deciding what the vote should mean. And I just think that's a bizarre way of doing things. I, luckily, a fellow like Philip Ruddock, um, who is a very, very decent man and a caring man, I, I think we'll get it right. But the electorate and the lawmakers will still have to act on this to make sure that people do have some freedom to express some views and to keep their personal views, um, whether, whether religious or not. And so they should. Brian, can I just come back to you and ask, do you at the moment feel like you, you are restrained in expressing yourself? Your yes, I think religious? that last year really showed up that, that Christians were under, under pressure. The law was used against a, uh, Julian Porteous in um, Tasmania. We had uh, people blocked from going to meetings where there was just peaceful law-abiding meetings. Uh, there was nothing particularly dramatic going to happen there, but there were militant people with their, they're entitled to their point of view, but they're not entitled to block people's right to have their say as well. And I think we need laws to um, really come down on those people hard so we continue to live in a society that uh, respectfully handles difference of opinion. Sure. Amanda Rishworth? Well, look, I think uh, we have good laws around human rights in this country. And I think the issue when it comes to rights, you're talking about the right uh, to express your religion, but there's the right also to not be discriminated against. So no right is absolute. We live in a community and we live in a democracy uh, where we do have the right to free speech, but we don't have the right to hate speech. So there are always going to be limitations on, on some rights because they are protecting other rights. And it's about getting the balance right in my mind. Uh, we don't want a place where people uh, can incite violence through hate speech. I don't want to live in that place, whether it's against Christians, whether it's against Muslims, whether it's against different races. And so there, no right is absolute in and of itself. You have to look how it interacts with other rights. And the right to live free from discrimination is also another important right. So we've got to look at how these work together and ensure that people have the right to express themselves, but also have the right to feel safe and secure in, in, their, in, in the place where they live. Ken Roth? Yeah. I think it's important to understand that religious freedom is really, it is about personal beliefs. Nobody can tell you, you know, what God to pray to, how you're going to pray, who you're going to get together with when you pray. Um, those are all kind of critical elements of, of freedom of religion. On the other hand, some people cite freedom of religion to justify mistreating others. And that's where you have to draw the line. And so, you know, for example, when people say, you know, I'm not gonna bake a cake in my bakery for a gay couple, that's bigotry, that's discrimination, that's not freedom of religion. And it's important to make that clear. I mean, imagine if you said, you know, in my bakery or my restaurant, I'm not gonna serve Aboriginal people because my religion doesn't permit that. I'm not gonna serve Jews, I'm not gonna serve Muslims. You can imagine where this is gonna go. So how we treat other people is a matter for discrimination laws and things of that sort. It's not a matter of, of our, our religious freedom, our personal beliefs. And just before we move on, very quickly, um, we 
have the Ruddock Review coming down the line, but is there a sense that laws actually need to be changed, that, that the laws we have at the moment aren't sufficient? Well, I think you always want to be very careful uh, when you're seeking to legislate in this area, uh, lest you create a problem that didn't previously exist, or lest uh, in trying to, uh, try to fix a problem, uh, you, you codify something that you don't want to be acceptable into being accepted. Um, you've got to be very careful in this area. And I, I always think that the, the greatest protection uh, for uh, religious freedom uh, is having a robust and pluralistic democracy uh, where views can be debated openly, uh, where people feel the freedom to put a view, but equally, someone else has the freedom to challenge that view. Okay.